Unexpressive characters are very common in anime, which seems counterintuitive. It's such an expressive medium. But I'm not here to explain why that trope is so common and relatable. Why is it so hard to pretend to be human? I mean, be human. Just look at my very human fingers. Okay, let's get into this. Today we're exploring how the one-note portrayal of the lead character in Villainess Level 99 uses this neutrality to perfection. Yumiela doesn't smile. We don't see her laugh or cry. She doesn't outwardly react to anything because she's shut herself off from the world. Yumiela has been shunned her entire life, beginning with her black hair, which is seen as taboo in this aristocratic society. Feels a bit weird for a Japanese anime. I believe black hair is pretty common there, so probably not something to feel self-conscious about. Can't imagine it being a very relatable issue in the country. Then again, I suppose it's generally considered more problematic to point out racial characteristics in a group you're not a part of, so, fair enough. This wariness turns to fear when people realize she also uses dark magic and has an insane power level. How can anyone at her age, or any age for that matter, be level 99? Yumiela is powerful and a practitioner of magic few have ever seen. Even when dark magic is being used in wholesome ways like healing, it's presented in the most off-putting way imaginable. This is censorship I'm more than happy to allow. Carry on. Even her name harkens to her being a darker character. Her last name is literally Dalkness. That's just a bad English pronunciation of darkness. If ever a person's prejudice was to help them avoid danger, it would be here. And that all makes sense. She's supposed to be evil. Yumiela is a video game character whose consciousness was overridden by someone else. She's built to be the game's secret, not-so-secret, final boss. There is something menacing about our hijacked main character, an impression compounded by how unfazed she is by those around her. She doesn't back down from confrontations. She never shows weakness. Yumiela isn't afraid to put her life on the line to get stronger, and believes others should do the same, much to their dismay. No wonder Alicia thinks she might be the demon lord. Well, outside of the fact that she's never threatened anyone, in spite of being significantly stronger than them? Actually, kind of a dumb thought to have. What do her fellow classmates think her plan is in attending a school she could easily wipe off the face of the planet if she's evil? It would be a very dumb plan. Nothing at the school can make her any more powerful, and she has no reason to hold off on attacking now. In the end, Yumiela has no friends. She can't even get close to cats, because they're afraid of her. Which at least proves she's not a witch, so that's a positive. What's the reasoning behind that trope anyway? Are cats drawn to death? Is it related to their completely scientific nine lives? Her closest contact is probably her maid and, well, she's her maid. Kind of hard to form a true friendship with that sort of power imbalance. There's also a fellow student she starts talking with and assisting in training exercises, but he's friendly and liked by everyone. It's unlikely to mean anything. Certainly there's no reason he might actually like her. Then, we get this. I love this scene. Not just because we get a crack in her armor, a break in the shell she's been using to protect herself from the world. I love it because of the line itself. She's remained cold for so long she doesn't even recognize what happiness feels like. Smiling is foreign to her. That's something I'm quite familiar with. I can never quite tell if I'm smiling or not. The muscle movements don't feel natural. By doing this, the seemingly one-note characteristics of our hero slash villainess? Anyway, it's revealed that the indifferent persona we get is just that. A persona. A facade. A lie to herself and the world. The real Yumiela is hidden somewhere beneath, just beginning to awaken. She is as unaware of who she really is, or wants to be, as we are. It represents the first step in a much longer journey. We're already at the end of the fifth episode, and yet the show knows to take its time with getting our protagonist to open up. Even the smile she gives is muted. Understated. The beginning of something new but not fully realized. Yumiela is starting to realize that she isn't completely trapped by the old programming of her character. Her main hope until now has been avoiding detection and preventing herself from being forced into the villainess role. That's it. Nothing about happiness or acceptance. But a new door has opened up to her. One that shows a potential path to more than sheer survival. Maybe she can actually start enjoying life. Of course, there's a chance that I'm reading too much into things. I have been known to do that from time to time. But I've also only watched five episodes. It might pivot in a completely different direction. Like this channel. Still trying to figure out the style I'm going for here. The talking on camera format wasn't working for me. Or people watching me stumble through my lines. All that movement and expressiveness was exhausting. And made my face hurt. 
There's a reason my avatar is based off of Psyche from Psyche K. We're the type to mistake emotions for indigestion. Though I've occasionally been told I can be quite animated, it's possible people are being sarcastic there, but it might also explain why I've always been drawn to animation. Drawn to animation. That's funny. Well, I better quit before I discover anything to disprove what I've been saying. She already smiled in episode 2? That's quite unfortunate. Hopefully no one made it this far into the video. Until next time. Peace.